What is up, my friends? You are very welcome along to Monday Night's Late Night Agenda, proudly being brought to you with thanks to our friends at Oosh.com. Oosh, the home of giveaways, whether it be cars, tech, Holidays, cash, or those all-important football club packages. Our friends at Oosh have got you covered. And don't forget, you can enter any of the Oosh draws with 10% off the normal draw price by using the Anfield Agenda referral code AA10. And scan that QR code in the bottom right-hand corner, and that will bring you to the Oosh website, where you can well, you can do as much damage as you want to your bank balance, because there's lots of really cool and interesting draws on there, including one for four people this week. The draws on Thursday to Liverpool versus Spurs four tickets in the cup four places in a hotel for the night and 500 euro in Ryanair vouchers or the cash alternative if you so please and again massive shout out to our sponsors Oosh so look tonight I've got a bit of good news for you and a bit of an interesting story for you the good news is Many of you guys have been saying to me over the past couple of weeks, Craig, we're seeing loads of links to midfield players. Obviously, we're seeing the Jude Bellingham stuff. We spoke about lots of other players as well. But lots of people have been inquiring why no news or why no stories surrounding Nicola Barella. And I can say that now Nicola Barella has been mentioned from the Italian media linking to both Liverpool and Chelsea. Now, the story goes on to say, and there's two different prices mentioned across two different stories, which really confuses me. But it does go on to say that Barella is reportedly a target for Liverpool and Chelsea in the summer, and that both clubs could be looking to go head to head in a battle to sign him. Now, we shouldn't be or wanting to go head to head in a battle with Chelsea for signing anybody because we know only too well how happy Todd Bowley seems to be to get creative with the contract lengths and to spend a load of dosh. But if we could get Barella, it is somebody who I think we'd all agree would be in a very, very, very fine addition to the Liverpool midfield recruitment, uh, or Liverpool midfield recruitments, I should say. And also, with maybe Inter Milan in a position where they may not have Champions League football this season, perhaps that puts a bit more financial pressure on them, or perhaps Barella may look for a move away. Now look, I know what you're thinking, hang on a minute, Craig, we're also not going to be in the Champions League next season. Yes, that is most probably th true, but... Premier League money is a bit stronger than the money in the Italian leagues and it is no shock to me that it is Premier League clubs that have been linked. Now look, he is, I guess, a little bit older than some of the other midfield targets that you will see Liverpool linked with and the price tags mentioned range from £70 million, which to me seems high, to somewhere in and around the 40 to 50 million euro price range. And both of these stories come from Calcio Mercado. But as I said, it is interesting to see that in one article, it suggested that Liverpool and Chelsea could pay up to 70 million pound. In the next article, it says that Liverpool and Chelsea could pay as much as 50 million euro or 43 million pound. So I guess we want to believe the lower valuation, of course, because that makes sense. But look, I just don't get the feeling that Barella will want to move to the Premier League from Italy. He strikes me as one of those players who's quite comfortable in that league where he is. He's uh, well cut out for the league. And look, would I take him? Yes, absolutely. Especially if we are talking about a fee of an around 40, 45 million pound. That seems fine. We do need reinforcements. Obviously, we know that uh, we're losing Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, Naby Keita, probably James Milner, unless Jurgen Klopp has his way and wants to keep James Milner forever. I don't know, cryogenically freeze the dude. Uh, um, we know we need to bring them in. We know Jude Bellingham's the target. I'm sure you guys seen the video yesterday of the gentleman with the uh, Jude Bellingham 8 shirt on when he was meeting Jurgen Klopp at Anfield. So, you know, I don't know how to read that situation. I really don't. But look, it is looking good in that regard. And I know people are asking when we can expect an announcement on Bellingham's future, wherever that may lie. This is the part where I have to pretend, you know, that it won't be Liverpool. It will. Um, so, yeah, look, let's move on. So, Barella, let me know your thoughts. Do you think it's realistic? Would you like him at Liverpool? Or do you think maybe the money could be spent better elsewhere? Uh, he is a talented football player. There is no deny denying that. But I just don't see it being realistic for us. Chelsea, look, they are a bit haphazard in their expenditure. And the reason why I think I'm a little bit more doubtful about Barella is... If we take a player from the Italian League to the Premier League, I think it's a 50-50 chance if it works. I know, it's weird, right? But it seems to be a league that, to my memory, more than any other, players don't really 
acclimatise well to the Premier League from it. Yes, there have been some notable exceptions, but I would say there's probably been a far more that have failed than have succeeded. So look, again, let me know your thoughts. I want to move on to another interesting thing, though, that came from the Daily Mail this weekend. And there's not many times that you're going to hear me say interesting and Daily Mail in the same sentence. But this has been something that we've been speaking about quite a bit over the last year or so on the channel. And I wanted to get your opinion on it. So the, uh, the article in the Daily Mail said the Premier League are discussing plans to ditch their TV TV deals with Sky Sports and BT and show the games on their own platform. Now I don't know because I haven't got the article in front of me if they mean this is only for the, the English Irish markets or if this is something that they're looking to do across the board and just remove all those commercial partnerships and go to a streaming on demand service. I think it's something that makes a lot of sense. La Liga tried to do it and it didn't work. But I don't think La Liga has the same pull as it once had. You know, they don't have the Cristiano Ronaldo's, the Lionel Messi's in La Liga anymore. So I think it was bad timing from them to launch the product. But I think the thinking behind it was sound. Now, Simon Jordan was the first person that I ever heard mentioning this maybe two seasons ago. And the more I've thought about it over that time, the more I think it's a stroke of genius. Yes, it would be a gamble from the Premier League because they're taking away all these guaranteed incomes that they have from Sky, BT, the zone in other countries or whomever it may be. But ultimately, the payoff could be huge and it could expand into a lot of different styles of content for us fans as well. And I don't know about you guys and girls, but for me, I do find that I'm getting more and more annoyed with the money I'm having to pay for Sky and BT with what I'm actually getting for that money. It used to be you bought Sky, you got your football. Now it's you have to have Sky, you have to have BT, you have to have Amazon Prime. Uh, and I'm sure more will be coming. The zone will be looking to get into the football market. So if they were to go with a model, something like the WWE have done where you can go on have access to every single game of course which is what we want here we don't want 3 p.m blackout so you'd have to have access to every single game maybe some club specific content for a little premium on top of that but also access to the archives all the games all the goals all the interesting moments over the years and maybe some cool content built around it so i guess my question to you is what would you be willing to pay per month for a service like that you know, my own Sky bill is is fairly hefty. I think it's certainly north of 150 quid a month. So for me, if you were to put in a package like that where I could watch every single Liverpool game, I could watch every other Premier League game, go back and look at goals, highlights, all that kind of stuff, I think easily I'd be willing to pay 35 quid a month. Um, and I'd, I'd pay that very, very happily. And I probably did Sky Sports and the other packages because... I only really have them for the football. So I want to know what you guys think about it. Good idea, bad idea, or maybe you're a little bit indifferent. Let me know. I do understand that streaming can be a bit more um, unstable compared to maybe some, some live content that's done from satellites and that goes through your TV box and stuff like that. But ultimately, I've been using a Sky Glass TV now for... Uh, the second half of this season and, and bar a little delay from what it would be if it was on the SkyQ box other than that it's been pretty good for me to be fair so uh, but I have pretty steady internet so again love to know your thoughts that is it for me tonight my friends keep an eye out for a second video popping up on the channel I'm going to be discussing the Andy Robertson incident with that linesman yesterday and a little bit about Roy Keane in there as well so until then thank you again to our sponsors Oosh don't forget that you can uh, enter Oosh completely well I would say completely free completely 10% less that, that, that's not even a sentence but there you go 10% less than anybody else by using the referral code AA10 scan the QR code in the bottom right hand corner much love my friends I hope you're feeling as optimistic as I am about the remainder of the season because yesterday well yesterday put me in good form I know it wasn't perfect but it was a lot better talk to you soon bye bye